want to go to New York, right? You want to go to New York. What do you think New York is like in the spring? Mm. In the springtime, is it? People, people get into the Times Square for the all over the world? Mm -hmm. That's on New Year's. Yeah, that's New Year's Day. But yeah, people do, a lot of tourists come to Times Square, right? And Times Square, back in the 70s and 80s, used to be a very dangerous place to be, right? There's a lot of crime, there's a lot of like adult bookstores, a lot of prostitutes, a lot of everything. It's very, cops didn't really go there, you know, so it's a very dangerous place to be. Then, when Mayor Giuliani took over, then he changed all that and he started selling the uh, selling the businesses for really cheap to bigger corporations like Disney and high-end restaurants and things like that uh, TV companies things so now it's an entertainment district right so a lot of people who are in entertainment go to you know, a lot of famous people down in Times Square too so and a lot of television channels news channels newspapers and uh, let me see what else um, like cable TV channels, they all have their offices there now. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you do you plan to go mm. sometime? I wish I could. You wish you could. Um, you want to, so uh, maybe you, I think maybe you can someday. You just have to get a passport. <laughs> so once you get a passport, you can go. Okay. And today is the 31st. You know what tomorrow is, right? What's tomorrow? April Fool's. April Fool's Day. And what do we do on April Fool's? People trick, <laughs> trick, or trick cheating. Yeah, we play tricks on each other. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, of course, it was very mean tricks. But as an adult, you can play silly tricks like saying uh, saying your name is different all day. So my name is Tyson, but I can go around saying, who's Tyson? I'm Bob. Where's Tyson? I don't know this Tyson. And then they can call me Bob for the rest of the day, right? Or maybe a radio station usually plays rock and roll. It, it will play like country music all day just to mess with its listeners, right? And then of course you see a bunch of uh, fake news in your news feeds. You know, a lot of newspapers and stuff used to do that too. All right. So, do you do anything here in Japan for April Fools? Mm. Like, what kind of things? I don't have. I don't have some kind of friends to exchange messages or emails okay. each other. Mm. Oh, okay. But I have a foreign friends uh, chatting or talking or in this smartphone mm -hmm. exchanging messages or emails each other like a, some kind of female friend or like a model. Okay. And do you tell jokes to each other on April Fools? Like what do you do? Do you try and trick each other? I didn't I didn't reach to the level of trick or to, to each other in my English. Oh okay. Well I think you know just maybe sometime you can try. Uh, but on April Fool if you can uh, find a place that um, like read about April Fool's jokes okay so there's April Fool's jokes and find a place that would have that on the internet and you can read about it you know April Fool's jokes uh, let me see there's got to be a good website somewhere so April Fool's jokes and you'd start off with the jokes for kids, obviously, because you don't want to make the mistake. Uh, but, you know, there's like uh, things with kids you can, uh, um, you know, what they used to do in, in my uh, elementary school was we'd have the bottle of water, we'd walk out of the room, we'd come back, and the bottle of water was, now all of a sudden it was a soft drink. It was 7-Up or something. I'm like, ah, this is my drink. And the teacher would be like, ha, 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 you know joke on a kid, right? So nothing dangerous, right? Or you can convince your friend that there's like, uh, oh, I'm moving to New York and then, uh, you know, I'm going to be there for two years and ha ha, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, really? No, April Fool's. So when you confess that it's a joke, when you say, nope, it's just a joke, you say April Fool's, 
but you can only do it on April 1st, right? That's the rule. Okay, April Fools. Very good, very good. Okay, so I know that you want to go to New York and you want to, we like to, to, to do our uh, role play of going through New York Customs, but, and you want to you go practice there as a cardiologist, right? What else do you want to do in New York? Is there anything you'd like to talk about that you'd like to maybe see? Is there anything else you'd like to do in New York? Going to TV studio and meet to some kind of celebrities. Meet celebrities, okay. So we can say, go to TV station and meet celebrities. That's, that's a good thing to do. So, in the uh, in New York, there's a lot of uh, different shows, like the Tonight Show. There's the Late Show, things like that that you can buy tickets to go to the audience. And then sometimes the tickets you can get a meet and greet with the star if you pay extra money, right? So you can get like autographs, or you can talk to them and stuff. That's actually pretty cool. It's a good idea. Okay. And then uh, what about? Um, what about, like, are there any restaurants that you know of in New York? For example, a French cuisine, fancy restaurant. Okay, fancy French restaurant. So I know there's one in New York. Let me see what it is. I just want to make sure I have the right one. So, uh, fancy French restaurant in New York. What's the what's the most famous one? There's a meal, but there's also another one that's like the famous one. Here, instead of fancy, I say famous French restaurant. Famous. What do we got? Um, Balthazar. No, that's not it. The Cuckoo Raoul's Bistro de Ami. Hmm. Oh, maybe it closed. Maybe it's no longer around. Okay. So I know there's one called the... Uh, what was it called? La Petite Bouchon? La Petite Bouchon. Okay. And we can go there if you like. What else do you think? Balthazar, which is a really good one from what I hear. I've only been to New York once, so I really don't know much about it. Anyways, okay. All right. So do you have any questions for me before we start? Mm, you are from the United States, right? I'm sorry? You are from the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm from California. Have you ever been to New York or Manhattan? I've been to New York and Manhattan only once, and that was when I was 23 years old, and that was back in the 90s. So it was the World Trade Center was still there. <laughs> so it is interesting place to be. Very big city, very small, but packed with people, right? Um, and it was June, so it was a little bit warm, you know. Um, they get very hot there in the summertime. So June, uh, June in New York is very hot. June, July, August, August being the hottest month in New York is very hot. Okay, very hot. And some parts of New York have a lot of crime. Some parts don't have very much crime. But the Central Park. Central Park is very nice, but only in the daytime. The nighttime is very scary. How was New York? It was amazing. We did all the touristy things. We went to the World Trade Center, went to the Empire State Building. We went to Central Park. Um, we went to see a Broadway play, which was very nice. Um, in the... 
daytime only. Okay, um, and uh, you know there was a. Um, we had a, a friend we were meeting, and he lived on Staten Island, so we went to Staten Island, and then we went and saw a Mets game, and, uh, and we saw the Mets play, because I don't like the Yankees, so I like the Mets, so we went and saw the Mets. Went to see the Mets. Why not the Yankees? Well... So I, uh, when I was very young, um, well, going from Southern California, I was always, I'm always been a Dodgers fan, right? Love the Dodgers. And there were three years in a row where the Dodgers and the Yankees were in the World Series. So it was like 1980, 81, and 82, right? And they lost the first two to the Yankees. And of course, my mother and father were like, oh, the Yankees suck. You know, they've, all they do is buy their players, right? Because they have so much money. They're the most famous baseball team in America, right? So they used their money to buy all the good players, right? And the Dodgers back then were, were not doing so well with the money. So we had, you know, we had a good infield, but but we did win in 1981, and then uh, that was that was amazing. So, um, but yeah, the Yankees are always my, I would say, nemesis. You know, not exactly my enemy, but my opposite team that I like. So, but the Mets are in the same league, so I always, I always see the Dodgers and the Mets play, okay, because they're in the same league. So, yeah, play at uh, City Field, yeah, okay. And then um, there was one game in 1981 where the Yankees pitcher... Uh, he hit uh, my favorite player in the head with a pitch and knocked him out, right? So ever since then, I'm not like the Yankees. So I will give this to you so you don't have to write. But you can if you want. Okay. All right. We're doing pretty well. All right. What would you like to talk about today? First of all, I have a small friend, like, like being model, a female model in the all over the world, for example, Russia, Israel, Russia, Israel, hmm. um, Italy, in the all over the world, I have a lot of female friend who is acting as a model. So okay. When they came to Japan, I want to introduce mm -hmm. Chabish Tsukiyaki to my... Ah. Express Right. Oh, this is the Wagyu Sukiyaki, right? Mmm. Mm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Fried salmon. <laughs> That's a little tiny piece. Oh, there's a big beef. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and it's got big, giant chunks of tofu, too. That's really good, you know, like a big tofu. So is this in uh, Kyoto? Isetan. Oh, Isetan. Oh, that's right. That's right, Isetan. Right up here, right? Okay. And do you go here often? Mm, once or twice in two or three months. Oh, okay. Very good. Wow. Pardon me. Okay. 
So it looks like they put it in the pan that has salt in there as well. And is that to show you? Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you want to have it? I do. Mm -hmm. Looks very good. It looks very nice. Is it pretty expensive? Maybe <coughs> 100 dollars per person. Wow, okay. It's impressive. There's a the tofu. And is that, what are those? Is that is garlic or sweet potato? Mm. What is that? Huh. And then what kind of, uh, in the bowl, in this bowl down here, what kind of liquid is in the bowl? In the raw eggs. Raw eggs? With the raw eggs. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Oh, that's right, I wrote the ingredients down last time. Very nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Very nice. All right, what would you like to start with today? It's from my friends about Skiaki. Okay. So let's, uh, so how we do this, we just say, uh, if I were to ask you, well, what kind of, what is sukiyaki? Sukiyaki is a hopo dish in, with meat and vegetables, um, vegetables and meat be wagyu sauce. Yeah. So what we would say is we'd say um, hot pot dish with vegetables and wagyu, wagyu style beef. I just, the way I wrote it down was a little backwards, but yeah. Wagyu style beef. Okay. So, I would say a hot pot dish with vegetables, tofu, and wagyu style beef. That's a good way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I would say, well, what, what comes in it? What is inside it? So there's a lot of these different things. Uni is appetizers. Right. Mushrooms. Braised beef. Braised beef. Eggs. Eggs, enoki, beans, sprouts, tofu, onions, dips, cabbage, and bamboo shoots, kunmyaku, mm -hmm. misna. Mustard seeds, yeah. Misna is mustard seed, yeah. So what does it taste like? So that's the question, yeah. What what is it how does it taste? Salty, salty and a little sweet. Mm. Okay. So it's salty and a little sweet. Okay. Salty and a little sweet. Okay. Now here's a here's a really good question. Uh, what else do you what do you drink with sukiyaki? What's the best drink? Mm, soft drink or shum, soft drink or mm, ginger ale. Oh, okay. We can say it goes best with soft drinks or 
ginger ale. Yep, goes best with soft drinks or ginger ale. Okay. Now, what if she? What if your friend wanted to have a beer? <laughs> Would that be okay? Would beer go well with it? My friend is my friend is almost twenties or thirties. So okay, so maybe not beer. <laughs> they want to drink with beers. Okay, so beer is also good with sukiyaki. Cool. All right. And then she would say, oh, it sounds delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I would, then she would ask, oh, well, how much, uh, what kind is it? What What are the different types? Dambu is about 34 dollars. Mm -hmm. The most cheapest one. Right. Pine is about 50 dollars. The middle class. Sushi is the most upper class of about 60 dollars. Mm -hmm. Very good. And what's so special? What is in the special? Is it just more or is it is it both bamboo and pine or is it what it, how how is it different? So it's about the most delicious beef, wagyu beef. Ah, okay. So if you want the best beef get the special sukiyaki. Cool, get the special sukiyaki. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, if you want the best beef, get the special sukiyaki. Perfect. All right, any other questions about this? That's all. That's all, okay. So let me see the time here. We got, it. we're doing really well, good. All right. How about, so what would you like to do next? Doing uh, <laughs> mm. We are doing a lot of many, many, many European about the uh, Starbucks and Subway, so maybe Oh, customs and immigrations, okay. Let me just do this real quick. All right. I just wanted to input our talk about the sukiyaki so we can have something in there. Okay. So if I put the sukiyaki in here, that means you can, if you don't have me next time, you can talk about sukiyaki with somebody else because they'll see, oh, he talks about sukiyaki. And they might talk to you about it. Okay, so Customs and Immigrations. And welcome to the United States. Welcome to, welcome to the United States at LaGuardia Airport in New York. Not the John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, okay. Let's welcome to the United States at John F. Kennedy Airport, or JFK. Okay, airport. Okay, and where are you flying from? We are coming from the tunnel to we are coming from the Narita Narita Airport Tokyo Tokyo from Japan. Okay. We are coming to United States to live and working as a cardiovascular surgeon. Okay. And how many people in your party? Mm, me and my wife and my child, three or four families. Okay, may I see your passports please? Here you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go, okay. Yeah, okay. This looks good. This looks good. Unfortunately, your passport is expired, so I'm afraid we're going to have to take you in the back and ask you some questions. Is that okay? Were we? Yeah. Passport expired two weeks ago. Mm, hmm. I understand. Okay, yeah. So we'll take you in the back. We'll ask you some questions. Just a formality. Okay? All right. So please tell your wife that they'll be, it'll, it'll be about a half hour. Okay? Cool. All right. So sit you down. Okay, Mr. Saito, this won't take very long. I just need to ask you some other questions. Uh, is your current passport, is it, are you, did you renew it and you just didn't get it yet? So have you received your new passport yet? Oh, I remember that I, mm -hmm. I, I thought I have, 
I thought I should, I thought I'm, I must have I must have renewed my passport. Okay. Well, let me just see here. I'm just typing. Okay, it looks like you did renew it. They just did not send you your new. They just didn't send it to you yet. So it's probably still in the mail in Japan. Um, do you have anybody in Japan that can send it to you? At the Japanese embassy. Okay, they can send it to you? Okay, very good. All right, and uh, let me see here. So, do you have an address in New York City? Oh, very best thing at the New York Manhattan Midtown is Trump Tower. Okay, very good, the Trump Tower. Very good. And, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue you a temporary visa. Uh, so you can get uh, you know you can get out of the airport and get back to your uh, um, your your new residence, and uh, we're gonna have, um, you just need to make sure to contact the Japanese embassy within two weeks, okay? In the New York, New York City. Yeah, contact the Japanese embassy in New York City, and within two weeks, so you have two weeks to contact them, and they'll make sure they get you your new passport. Where is the Japanese embassy in New York? Ooh, that's a good question. Let me see. How about this? Where is your mail with the laptop screen? I'll take a, I'll take a photo. Mm. Let's see in New York City. New York. Uh, let's see here. Okay, it's, uh, let me see. Then it is at 299 Park Avenue in Manhattan. Oh, on the Please let me take a photo. Absolutely. Push out. Click it. Okay, good. Very good. So yes, yeah, so if you could just uh, call them and then make an appointment and within two weeks and you should be just fine. Okay. And let me see. Okay. So it looks like we've went, we've, uh, we've checked your baggage. You're free to go. So if you have any questions, please call the, uh, um, please call the Japanese embassy and let them take care of that for you. Okay. Welcome to New York. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, so um, I've traveled to countries before where my passport, so I have an American passport. Now, that used to be the most powerful passport in the world, right? Not so much anymore. Japanese passport's actually very powerful, way more than America. The reason is, is because not a lot of countries like America anymore, and they actually don't like us, which is understandable. So I went to Saudi Arabia, right? And I was on a nonprofit trip with the nonprofit I worked for. And my passport was valid, but they didn't accept it. Uh, because apparently I had to call ahead and make a, get a visa prepared before, but I never did. So they had to take me into a room and ask me a bunch of questions. And I had to do exactly, so they said, call the American consulate within two weeks, make sure you get that exception in your passport um, and you'll be fine. But uh, yeah, I was in the, I was in that room for like three hours. You know, what are you doing here? What where are you coming from? Like, what are you know? Why are you bringing vitamins into the country? You know, so things like that. So I used to bring uh, I used to work for a nonprofit that gave vitamins to children who were not being fed very well. So they didn't have enough food, so we give them vitamins. That was part of my job. I did it all over the world for a while. So I've traveled everywhere. I've been to ninety two countries. Right. So Saudi Arabia is very hard because it's a pretty wealthy country, right? But they don't understand when I say, oh, I need to feed your kids. They're like, we don't have any starving children here. I go, yes, you do. So I got into a little argument with them. They're like, yes, you do have starving kids here. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Like, and he's like, look at me. I drive a Mercedes. I'm, I'm excellent. Look at my clothes. Like, we have no starving kids here. I go, trust me, you do. Okay. He could not believe it. He was very surprised. So, but on the other hand, you know, I ended up, uh, we ended up laughing and telling jokes. And then uh, he said, yes, just go to the American embassy and they'll take care of you. When you, when you send to the other room, why are parents anxious that you're feeling nervous or getting I was, arrested? Or? I was very nervous. So I wasn't really arrested. It didn't like, it's not like they put me in handcuffs and threw me in a cage, right? They just escorted me to a certain part of the airport and they sat me in a room and they asked me a bunch of questions. But I was really nervous. Also, it was really hot, so I was sweating. <laughs> so I was sweating. They were like, why are you sweating, Mr. Blades? Are you nervous? And I'm like, no, I'm just really hot, you know. Anyway, um, but it's, uh, it was very nervous. I was very nervous because I didn't know the law. Right? I had no idea. 
you know, I didn't know if they were going to throw me in a cage or not. I had no clue. Anyway, but yes, they're a very wealthy country, uh, but they do have people who are starving there. So that was my mission. So they're just wondering why I was bringing vitamins, you know, and why my passport didn't work. So that was the main thing. But other than that, after it was over, they were very nice. And they said, oh, we're going to drive you to your, uh, to your hotel, and then you get the embassies right over here, so you can just go there. And I went there, and it was fine. Yeah, no big deal. In America, it would be a little easier, I think, because they wouldn't, uh, unless you were really there to commit a crime or something, then they're, you know, if they, if they think you're a criminal, then they're going to put you in jail. But if it's just a expired passport, they would most likely help you figure it out. Yeah. So you don't have anything to worry about. But do make sure your passport is up to date. <laughs> That's the big thing. All right. Okay, so what, what would you like to do next? More and more different customer immigration. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let me just check the time. We've got 1416. We're doing really well. All right. Okay, welcome to JFK Airport. Welcome to the United States. And uh, how many people in your party? We are coming from the Narita Airport from Tokyo, Japan. And we are coming to United States to live and work in a cardiovascular surgeon with my families. Okay, and how many people are with you today? Me and my wife and my child. Okay, you are thank passport. you. Passports, very good, very good. Be good. Well, it looks like these check out okay. Uh, do you have anything that uh, you need to declare? I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. I have having medical instruments in my briefcase. In your briefcase. Do you mind if I take a look? Here you go. Shoot. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, this. Uh, were you able to carry this on the plane, or did you check it? Um, I'm carrying that one with us besides me on the airplane. Okay. So. It's very unusual. I'm not not uh, too happy about that, but it looks like it's safe. It's pretty small, you know. It's, it's just only a bunch blade. Yeah, it's only one inch blade, so it's not that big a deal. I'm just really surprised that they let you take it on the plane with you. So, but that's okay. All right, so that's fine. And it looks like you got a bunch of like stethoscope and stuff in here. Very nice bag, by the way. So, okay, here you go. Click, click. There you go. And now, uh, where will you be staying while you're in New York? In the, in the two or three months from now, mm -hmm. we'll be staying at the New York Manhattan Midtown East Downtown Tower. Okay. Manhattan at Trump Tower. Okay. And if I, uh, if I needed to ask any questions or follow up with you, can I reach you at the Trump Tower? This is my United States phone number and okay. email address, so okay. please take a photo or something. 212, no, 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 got it. Okay, I got it, thank you. 212-555-1212, very good. Okay, all right, looks like everything's in order, um, and uh, um, here's your passports back, and you're free to go. Thank you, welcome to New York. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, very good, all right. So, do you ever plan to go to New York? Do you have a plan? Or do you just want to? I just want to. Mm. Do you think you will? Mm, I wish I could. Mm. I think someday you could probably go if you wanted to. If you really wanted to, you could probably go. You know, you just have to make sure you save the money and make a plan. Um, and, uh, yeah. You should be able to go. There's lots of stuff to do there in New York. Actually, all up and down the east coast of the United States, there's many different little small towns and cities where you can do lots of different things. So, if you like nature, the east coast is very nice too. So, but yeah, I think you should try and go, just to see what it's like. You know, I came to Japan when I was 19 years old during the summer one time by myself, just because I thought, oh, why not go to Japan? I had saved up some money and. Uh, you know, I went, I didn't have any sort of plan, I had no travel guide, nothing, I just found a hotel and then just started walking. <laughs> and I found a lot of cool stuff to do, so, yeah. The food mainly was very good, so. Okay, alrighty, so 1420, so we've got five minutes left in this one. Uh, what else would you like to try? 
Did may you have any questions for me? May you, may you went to the Saudi Arabia and you went to you are sent to other room in the airport, custom immigration. Yes. How did you feel? You were getting nervous. I was scared. Yeah. Accident. I was scared. Yeah. So it's kind of like shaking a little bit because I don't know if you know, see when you don't know what the law is, you don't know if you broke the law, right? So you have no idea. And you hear stories that Saudi Arabia's justice system is very, very strict, right? Like if you steal something, they cut off your hand, right? I didn't want to get my hands cut off, so I was very, very nervous, right? Um, but at the same time, they were very nice because, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia and America have a treaty, and they, um, they know that if I do get mistreated, uh, you know, there will be you know, some sort of problem, but at the, at, they were, they're, they're police officers, they're, all police officers are very suspicious, you know, they're always like, who are you, what are you doing here, what is your purpose here, what are all these vitamins, you know, I had boxes and boxes of vitamins with me, right, vitamin A, uh, prenatal vitamins, and then also some deworming pills, and they're like, what are you doing with all these? And I'm like, well, I work for a nonprofit. So it was about three hours worth of questions, you know. And they said, well, the reason why we got you here is because you didn't apply for the visa beforehand. So the way it works, you're supposed to send your passport to the Saudi Arabian consulate in America, and they approve the visa, then they send it back to you with the visa in it. Then you go, right? And when I didn't have that stamp in there, when I got there, they were like, what are you doing here? <laughs> They're like, you're not supposed to be here. And I go, yeah, I'm on a trip with this nonprofit. See, here's my other, and my other coworkers were there. So I get taken in the back. I'm really nervous. But when I get out, I felt fine. You know, it was like, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. However, it's very hot. It's like almost, you know, 40 degrees, you know, and I was sweating and I was nervous. So I get out, and then all my fr all my friends that I work with are like, Tyson, what did you do? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, but then uh, what they did was they gave me, just like I did with you, they gave me the directions to the consulate, and I called them uh, that day. They made an appointment for the next day, and I, I uh, drove on down there. So, yeah. And it was, uh, the American consulate, you know, it was just like walking into America. See, you know, it's, just, it's like a little piece of America in Saudi Arabia, so you can... You don't have to act, you can act like an American, right? So just like if you're in Japan, you can go to the consulate in New York and it's like being in Japan when you're in New York because technically it is Japan, right? So you don't have to worry when you get to the consulate. You have to worry before you get to the consulate. You know, what if I, you know, what if I get stopped by a police officer on the way and they want to see my passport? Well, you know, there's a lot of explaining to do. So anyway. Yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty wild, but that's the only time I've ever had that problem. Um, when I went to India, I had to send my passport to the consulate, get a special visa, and then I could fly to India. So I had all the documents there. Um, Americans can't.